All right, it's time for this week's first prediction video, and I'm going to do multiple prediction videos uh, this week. We've got some great games, uh, matchups involving ranked teams, undefeated teams on the road, undefeated teams against uh, other ranked teams, lots of interesting storylines uh, heading into week nine of the 2024 college football season. So I'm going to do a couple, maybe three different prediction videos this week. But what I want to do here today in this first one is I want to take a look at all the undefeated teams. And I want to know which which undefeated team or teams are going to lose this weekend. There's eight undefeated teams remaining uh, in college football. And I believe an undefeated team has lost every single week. Now, there's a little bit of common sense involved in that. In week zero and week one, pretty much everybody that plays is undefeated, right? So half the teams that lose were undefeated because it's the first game. And then in week two, you still have a ton of undefeated teams. So a lot of them lose. Week three, a little bit less undefeated teams, but still a lot of them lose. Blah, 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 blah. Well, we're down to eight undefeated teams. Last week, Texas went down. The week before that, what was it? Ohio State went down. Uh, whatever. You get the idea. There's been undefeated teams lose every single week. We're down to the last eight of the undefeated. Will any of them lose this week? Will more than one of them lose this week? What we're going to do, I'm going to start with the, with the uh, undefeated teams that are playing other ranked opponents. And we've got a couple of games that fit that category. Then we're going to take a look at some undefeated teams who are playing on the road, which can sometimes be tricky. And then we'll look at the remaining um, undefeated teams. There's uh, two undefeated teams playing neutral site games this week. So we'll just kind of go through the list. But uh, ranked number one in the country, Oregon, 7-0, and is hosting number 20, Illinois. Oregon coming off um, a big win a couple of weeks ago against Ohio State. Then they went on the road last week, during the week, actually, and just destroyed Purdue. 35 to nothing. Illinois beat Michigan this past weekend, 21 to 7. Now they got to turn around and go on the road to Austin, a difficult place to play, and take on the undefeated Oregon Ducks. So, what do y'all think? Is there any chance here uh, of Oregon losing this game? Oregon's a significant favorite here, which uh, might not be that big of a surprise to you, the number one team in the country playing at home against Illinois. Now, Illinois is 6 and 1, and their only loss is to Penn State. They lost to Penn State 21 to 7. Uh, they've beat everyone else they played. That includes, I think, a win over Nebraska, win over Michigan. So nothing you would classify as like a huge win, but still, we're in week nine and Illinois is six and one. There's a lot of teams that would love to be in Illinois' position right now uh, at six and one at this point in the season. Uh, Oregon is a 22-point favorite in this game, and this number has actually gone up. It uh, opened around 21 um or so when it's up to 22 you probably can find it some places in between 21 and a half anyway it's bouncing around between 21 and 22 so about a three touchdown favorite Oregon is at home or a little bit more depending on where you look the over under is 54 and a half so um not really that high of a scoring game expected I'm assuming because they assume Oregon will limit Illinois uh uh offensively I love what I've seen from Oregon this year outside of the first two weeks and even that game against Boise State which Oregon got criticized for at the time looks a little bit better now at this point in the season that we see that uh 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 Boise State has not lost another game you know remember Oregon beat Boise State by I think it was three points you know Boise State has Ashton Gentry back when that game was played a lot of people didn't know about Ashton Gentry they just thought he was a running back that had a good game against Oregon now we kind of see what we're dealing with here with Ashton Gentry just unbelievable he's up over 1200 yards already averaging 10 yard over 10 yards per carry again and this isn't week nine this isn't a guy that gets two carries a game and one of them was an 80 yard run this is a guy uh their primary running back 1200 and something yards and he's averaging over 10 yards per carry so that win doesn't look as suspect as it did at the time now the Idaho thing back in week one yeah we can you know still have that debate but the point is since then we've seen Oregon play several conference games we've seen them host Ohio State we're pretty comfortable we know who and what Oregon is right now are they a perfect team are they unbeatable no but Dylan Gabriel's having a really good year that team and that roster is loaded with NFL talent on both sides of the ball and they're built from the inside out Dan Lanning I think has done a really good job of putting that roster together. They've got a couple of dynamic wide receivers. I like their running backs. Their defense is fast and physical. They fly around the field. They get to the ball. Uh, Dan Lanning is really doing a good job there early in his career at Oregon, uh, which, of course, uh, his first stop as a head coach 
So he's doing really good there. Illinois, Brett Bielema, also doing good. They were pretty good two years ago. I don't know how many of you remember, but Illinois had a decent team a couple of years ago. One of the best defenses in the country. I don't remember what their final record ended up being. They won eight or nine games, something like that. I mean, they didn't make the playoffs or contend to win the Big Ten, but it was kind of an out-of-nowhere season for Illinois. Took a little bit of a step backwards last season, but now, again, here we are this year at 6-1. and one. Again, the big win over Michigan uh last week and i say a big win i know michigan is bad i I get that but it's 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 like saying michigan is bad so illinois shouldn't be happy to beat them would be like saying alabama's having a down year so vandy shouldn't be happy about beating alabama vandy beating alabama is a big win no matter when it happens illinois beating michigan is a big win for illinois no matter when it happens I don't think Illinois has enough offensively to be able to just keep up with Oregon in this game. So in terms of just picking Oregon to lose this game as one of the eight undefeated teams this week that could possibly go down, I'm going to have to go no on that. I can't see Oregon losing. It seems to me that if Oregon was going to have kind of a slip-up week at any point during this portion of their schedule, it would have been last week. They had the huge game against Ohio State two weeks ago. It goes down to the end. They win by one point, biggest win of Dan Lanning's career. Then they got to turn around on a short week and travel to Purdue to take on the Boilermakers. And if something was going to happen weird with Oregon at this point in the season, it seems to me like it would have happened in that Purdue game. Uh, short turnaround after a really big game on the road during the week. But they showed no signs of slowing down. They dominated Purdue from start to finish 35 to nothing. The spread in this game, I'm less certain about. uh, Over 21 and a half, I'm not so sure. Illinois is a a pretty disciplined team. They play pretty good defense. Again, offensively, I think they're going to struggle to move the ball. So how many points do you think Oregon's going to score against Illinois here? If Oregon gets into the 40s, then I think they clearly cover because I don't think Illinois will get into the 20s. But I could see Oregon winning this game somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, 34 to 17, which would not be covering the 22-point spread, but would still be a massive win. Probably not going to bet on this game. If I did, I would lean Illinois plus 22. If I could get it, I would want as many points as I could get. But anything over 21, over three touchdowns, maybe lean Illinois, but I don't see any chance Oregon loses this game. All right, let's go on to another ranked versus ranked matchup coming up this week. And this isn't one that I think people thought was going to be a ranked versus ranked matchup when the schedules came out. But again, here we are in week nine, and uh, this involves an undefeated team and Notre Dame. And Notre Dame is not the undefeated team. Of course, they have a loss to Northern Illinois. But Notre Dame is playing Navy. Navy and Army, two of the good stories so far uh, this college football season. Nobody roots against Army or Navy, right? Now, I get it. If you're in the military, particularly if you were in the Army or in the Navy, then you're very pro the one side and you hate the other. From the rivalry standpoint, I get that. I just mean from the average college football fan's perspective, everyone wants Army and Navy to win every game. Like, no one... You know, some people hate Bama or Tennessee or Georgia or Ohio State or Oklahoma or, man, I hope Florida State loses this week or whatever team, right? You don't get that with Army and Navy. So there are going to be a lot of people pulling for Navy in this game this week because Notre Dame is one of those teams that people like to pick on, people like to hate, people like to see them lose, right? It's particularly funny this year to me that uh, Notre Dame's path to the playoff or potential path to the playoff includes games against both Army and Navy who are both undefeated and both ranked. They get Navy this week. They got Army coming up in a couple of weeks. That's particularly interesting to me because there's a long-running joke against Notre Dame um, about how they used to win a bunch of national titles 50 years ago by beating up on a bunch of service academies. It's just kind of a one-liner that people throw around when they're debating or arguing or trash-talking with a Notre Dame fan. It would be absolutely hilarious this year if the reason Notre Dame didn't get an opportunity to compete for a national title in the postseason in the 12-team playoff is because they got beat up by a service academy or two. And they are playing Navy this weekend. This is a neutral site game being played at uh, Giant Stadium, I believe, in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Notre Dame's a 13-and-a-half point favorite in this one. Uh... I think if Notre Dame is going to look, well, let me let me just put it. I, I think Army is the better of the two teams between Army and Navy. Now, I could 100% be wrong there, 
they're likely to play later in the conference championship game, Army and Navy. And if they don't play in that game, they play the Army Navy game a week later on December 13th anyway. So we'll find out for sure. And I'm not here to trash Navy or Army or one or the other. I'm just of the opinion that if Notre Dame is on, is going to drop one of the two, that it will be the Army game. Now, they, of course, could drop both of them, including this one here against Navy. Navy 6-0, and uh, Notre Dame 6-1, and neutral site game. Notre Dame favored by uh, 13 and a half, so just under two touchdowns here. Notre Dame, the, the Northern Illinois game, it's, it's hard to... It's hard to justify a performance like that against Northern Illinois. Now, Notre Dame's got some decent wins. In fact, their week one win on the road at Texas A&M is looking better and better and better every single week that goes by. Because I don't know if you know this or not, but that's Texas A&M's only loss of the year. And Texas A&M is currently tied for first place in the SEC with LSU, who both have zero conference losses. So that's Texas A&M's only loss was to Notre Dame way back in week one. Notre Dame turns around, loses in Northern Illinois. We all laughed about it. It was hilarious. We wrote Notre Dame off. I don't want to get into the conversation here about what should happen to Notre Dame if they're 11-1 with a loss to Northern Illinois. If you've been watching me long enough, you know what my feelings are on that. So I'm, I'm going to set that aside for now and just concentrate on this Notre Dame and Navy game. I think Notre Dame wins this game. So let, let me just, I'll just go ahead and put that out there now in, in terms of the original question in this video, how many undefeated teams are going to lose this weekend? I don't think Notre Dame is going to lose this game to Navy. Now, I think this could potentially be an interesting game in the second half. Navy, of course, like the service academies are every single year, extremely well coached, extremely well disciplined, and they run their offense like they're teaching it. Um, very few mistakes made on either side of the ball, mental mistakes made on either side of the ball by either Navy or Army anytime you watch them play. The obvious disadvantage that Navy and Army almost always face when they play a team of this caliber or really any power for program is the the difference in quality of athlete. And again, the last thing I want to do is come on here and make it sound like I'm somehow putting Army and Navy down. I'm not doing that. The reality of the situation is just like with almost any other group of five team, the caliber of athlete up and down that roster is, is just not the same on your typical Power 4 roster. And Notre Dame, I wouldn't consider to be even a typical Power 4 roster. It's above that. Uh, they recruit really well. They've got a lot of NFL players over there. It, it's, it's hard for me to ever pick an upset um, given those circumstances. That being said, we see it happen almost every single week. Northern Illinois beat Notre Dame earlier. So if Notre Dame turns the ball over, if Riley Leonard has a hard time completing passes, I mean, we've seen both of the, those things happen multiple times this year with Notre Dame, and Navy is able to force Notre Dame to play their style of football, then Navy's got a possibility of hanging around in the fourth quarter and potentially pulling off the upset. I just don't see it happening. And honestly, at 13 and a half, I would even take Notre Dame minus the 13 and a half. Now, if it were to creep over 14, I would probably switch to Navy and take the points. I think Notre Dame wins this game. I don't see them losing. Uh, all right, let's go on to uh, – those are the only two ranked versus ranked matchups this week involving undefeated teams, I'm pretty sure, unless I missed one. Now we're going to talk about some undefeated teams that are playing on the road. So road environments can be tricky in college football. We all know that. Now, not all road environments are built the same. Some are trickier than others. Some are more difficult than others. Some road environments uh, happen to be the home of better teams than others, right? Like – it could be really hard to play at a certain place, but if that team is absolutely terrible, then it, it matters a lot less, right? Penn State's still undefeated. They're 6-0. and They're coming off a bye week, and got, they got to go on the road this week and play a uh, Big Ten opponent, uh, Wisconsin. <clears throat> so a home game for Wisconsin. This can be a difficult place to play, Wisconsin. Rowdy crowd, the jump around. It can be an intimidating environment, but it's one that Penn State is relatively familiar with Penn State's favored by just under a touchdown in this one six and a half Wisconsin is five and two but they're three and one in the conference and that's important as we get down to the last few weeks of the season here and we're trying to determine who was going to conference championship games with the elimination of divisions it's become a lot more difficult to try to project who may go to um, these conference championship games right so even though Wisconsin is sitting on two losses, one of them's a non-con loss. You remember they lost to Alabama earlier in the year. 
They then turned around and lost on the road to Southern Cal, which looks really bad now. They lost that game 38-21. to But since then, they've reeled off three straight wins. Uh, 52 to six over Purdue, 42 to seven on the road at Rutgers, which is probably their most impressive game of the year. And then uh, Northwestern, they beat 23 to three. So they've got the two losses, but only one is a conference loss. So if they were to beat Penn State this weekend at home, they would have two losses. Penn State would have one, but they'd each only have one conference loss. And because Wisconsin would have just beaten Penn State, they would own a tiebreaker over Penn State. It would be a disastrous scenario for Penn State if they were to lose this game because when you look at Penn State's schedule uh, going forward, (coughs) of course, they've got the huge matchup coming up with Ohio State, and that's next week. This is a dangerous spot here for Penn State. Classic trap game, overlook this game, get caught looking ahead to the next week type scenario. I'm pretty concerned about Penn State in this spot here. I don't think Wisconsin's a bad team. I don't think they're a terrible team. I think they're pretty well coached. I like Luke Fickle. Now, he's gotten off to a little bit slower of a start at Wisconsin than maybe I thought he would, and I'm not even necessarily talking about their record because 5-2 and two is not terrible at this point in the year. I'm, I'm more so talking about just the product they're putting on the field so far a year and a half or so into the Luke Fickle era there at Wisconsin. We were kind of promised more of an of an air raid, throw it out type of deal. Wisconsin's been sort of stuck in the old three yards in a cloud of dust mentality for a long time. We've yet to really see that. They brought in an offensive coordinator who's known for opening up the passing game. So we'll see if they ever sort of start to shift in that direction. They've tried it from time to time, but overall, not really what I thought I would see yet from Luke Fickle. But this is a dangerous spot for Penn State here because they're going into a difficult environment against a team that is still alive in the Big Ten. That's the thing. It's easy for us to fa- as fans, right? We sit back and we form an opinion of a team, in this case Wisconsin, and, and the opinion, generally speaking, is, well, they're not, you know, they're not going to the playoffs. They're not winning the Big Ten. They're not making the Big Ten title game. We sort of form that opinion about a team, and we don't really look past that a lot of times. The teams don't operate that way. I promise you, with just one conference loss, there's not a soul on that team or that coaching staff at Wisconsin that isn't looking at this Penn State game and saying exactly what I said just a minute ago. If we beat Penn State, why not us? They'll be sitting with just one conference loss with a tiebreaker over Penn State. Now, you've got other teams you'd have to worry about, obviously, Oregon, Indiana primarily, uh, th- those two primarily in addition to Ohio State and Penn State. So, But this would be a huge step forward uh, for Wisconsin's uh, team this year, for Luke Fickle's program early on in his career at Wisconsin, and in terms of the Big Ten standings and what may happen with the Big Ten title game later on down uh, down the line. Wisconsin plays at Ohio State next week, then they get Washington, Purdue, Minnesota, and Maryland. All of those games are winnable. All of those games are winnable for uh, for Penn State. They need to get through the next two weeks, Wisconsin and Ohio State. Now, here's the good news if you're Penn State. You probably only need to win one of those in terms of making the 12-team playoff. If Penn State can go one and one over the next two weeks, they probably make the 12-team playoff. So can they? Can they beat Wisconsin this week or Ohio State next week, or do you think they can beat them both? I think they're capable of beat them, beating them both. I think Drew Aller is going to have to have two really good games. I am concerned for Penn State this week. FBI gives them a 70% chance to win, but to be honest with you, I don't put a whole lot of stock into the FBI. I put more stock into the Vegas numbers, people who are willing to put sort of money where their mouth is thing. Um, and they've got uh, Wisconsin, of course, as a 13.5-point uh, underdog. Uh a favorite uh, underdog to Penn state, but I'm worried about Penn state in this game. I, I'm going to, of the games we've talked about so far, I think Penn state has the a bigger chance to lose than either Notre Dame or Oregon. And it could happen. And for that reason, I'm going to take Wisconsin and the points in that game, but I'm going to assume Penn state finds a way to pull that thing out. All right, let's move on down the list. Miami is undefeated. This will be quick. They beat Louisville last week, 52-45. to This is the huge Miami-Florida State game. It's Miami-Florida State week, right? One of the best rivalries in college football. And nobody cares because Florida State is in the absolute toilet. Miami has a 0% chance of losing this game. It's not going to happen. I'm going to click on it just to see what the line is. 
Um, I, I know Miami's probably favored by what three touchdowns. Yep, three touchdowns. They're a 21 point favorite. Miami is. I'll take Miami. I'll lay the 21. Florida State's not any good. The players have given up on the coaching staff. The players have given up on the season. I think we're about to see us uh, start seeing Florida State flare players sit out the rest of the year. I would not be at all surprised to see that happen, given that the precedent has already been set by that current coaching staff that if you perceive a game not to matter, there's no point in playing in it. And let's be real Florida State's one in six. None of their games matter at this point, according to their own mentality from last year. They think the Orange Bowl didn't matter because it had nothing to do with with making the playoffs or being in the playoffs. Well, no game you play the rest of this year, Florida State, man, has anything to do with any type of postseason at all. So I'm not going to be at all surprised. Maybe not this week, but we start getting into November I wouldn't at all be surprised to find out that you got a lot of Florida State players who have a a hangnail, uh, you know, a bruised palm, whatever, and they're unavailable this week. And that's just all going to be code for these players are sitting out, they're quitting. There's going to be a mass exodus to the portal, I think, off of Florida State's roster this year when that portal opens up in December. Bottom line, Florida State's an absolute mess. You have a top talking point that floats around all the time about these rivalry games. Well, you can just throw the records out the window in a rivalry game. Anything can happen. While there might be some truth to that in certain situations, this ain't one of those situations. Florida State's one of the worst Power Four programs I've seen in the last 20 years. It's an absolute embarrassment. That coaching staff should be ashamed of themselves. The players should be ashamed of themselves. And their fans should be ashamed of themselves for the way they acted on the internet over the last 10 months. Give me the Miami Hurricanes. I'll lay the 21. I think Miami could beat them by 30 points. It will not be close. Uh, so we can just move right on from that. Uh, no no chance of Miami losing this week. Uh, next undefeated team, what do we have here? Iowa State. Did you even know they were undefeated? Iowa State is undefeated, and I'm going to go out on a limb here and say they've got a 0% chance of uh, losing this week uh, because they don't play. Um, and that might be good because they almost got got last week. Uh, they won 38 to 35 against central Florida. Who's not a good team this year. And they were trailing late in that game and had some last minute heroics to win that thing 38 to 35. So they get a bye week now to kind of rest up and prepare for the stretch run. But, uh, Ohio state still undefeated so, or Ohio state, Iowa state. Uh, so it's BYU. So sticking with the B, uh, big 12 here, BYU also seven and zero. Oh. Uh, they also escaped last week against a team that's been extremely disappointing this year, Oklahoma State. Now, I will admit that it looked to me like Oklahoma State played their best game of the season last week against BYU, but it came up a little bit short, 38-35. to 35. But Ollie Gordon finally looked like the Ollie Gordon we thought he would look like, uh, the best running back in football last year, at least in terms of yardage. Um, and then this year, just been kind of a dud, honestly. But he was back to hurdling players and dragging them down the field last week. He looked really good, but Oak State did come up a little bit short. BYU remained undefeated at 7-0. And they get to play that same Central Florida team that nearly beat Iowa State uh, last week. (coughs) If you go back to uh, a lot of my um, preseason type prediction videos, um, I never predicted Central Florida to win the Big 12 or make the Big 12 championship or anything like that. I thought they would be a little bit better than they are. But what I kept saying about Central Florida over and over and over again is, they may have a say in who does play in the Big 12 title game, or more importantly, who doesn't. And I think that might still be the case. Um, These are two, uh, you know, these aren't top 10 opponents here, Oklahoma State and Central Florida, but these are two decent competition in a row here for BYU. We saw them struggle last week against Oklahoma State, a physical team that likes to run the ball. Same thing with UCF here. Now, there are some things going on with the quarterback situation down there between K.J. Jefferson and I'm drawing a blank on the other guy's name, so we'll see what they do there. But I have a feeling UCF could pull off this upset here. Let's see what the spread is on this game. Uh, It's a home game for Central Florida, so that's obviously a benefit. Uh, Yeah, believe it or not, Central Florida is actually favored in this game by one and a half. Now, that surprises me. I'm going to be honest with you. That surprises me. Central Florida's three and four. They're one and three in the Big 12. BYU is seven and oh. Uh, and Central Florida is a one and a half point favorite. 
Um, I did not expect to see that. I thought BYU might be around a six-point favorite, and I was prepared to pick Central Florida plus the six points. Um, but now in order to pick Central Florida, I got to lay a point and a half. You know what? I'm going to I'm gonna go with my gut from the preseason, my talking points with Central Florida, that not good enough to win the Big 12 or make the Big 12 title game but good enough to maybe beat one of the teams that is good enough to make the Big 12 title game. That team right now is BYU. I'm going to go ahead and pick the upset here. I'm going to take Goose Malzoon and UCF to knock over, knock off uh, the undefeated Bicycle College. Uh, yeah, give me Central Florida. Why not? You got to pick an upset, right? Uh, and I guess technically it's, I can't, but can y'all believe Central Florida is favored here? I, I'm going to take Central Florida. So, so far, that's my first uh, undefeated team I would have losing uh, for this week. Indiana. Indiana's undefeated and is absolutely road grading people. Um, I, I've talked about this a lot the last few days because I finally watched an entire Indiana game, I, I, which I admitted I had not prior to this past weekend. I had watched some parts of some games. Now, they've got some issues going on with their quarterback. He had to have thumb surgery. He's not playing this week. They've got a huge game coming up here in a couple of weeks. <coughs> um, this week, they are hosting Washington. So, Indiana, 7-0, and fresh off an absolute beatdown uh, of Nebraska this past week, 56-7 to uh, at home. This week, they're hosting Washington. Washington, uh, first year in the Big Ten, they're 4-3, and 2-2 two and two in, uh, two two in the conference. And uh, what are the odds on this one? Uh, let's find out. Uh, six and a half. Indiana's favored by six and a half. I'm going to be honest here. I've made so much money betting on Indiana this year because I have been betting Indiana to cover since all the way back when they played, I think it was at UCLA in week two or three. And I've been betting them every week since then. And they have covered every single week since then. They've been an absolute wagon. I'm not getting off the wagon until they don't cover a game. Now, here's the danger. Kind of like what we talked about with Penn State playing at Wisconsin and potentially getting caught. Um... Looking ahead, if you look at Indiana's schedule here, they play Washington today, or this weekend. But then their next three games are on the road at Michigan State, who is a lot better than people thought they would be. Home against Michigan, which again, just like we said with Illinois earlier, uh, we know Michigan's not great, but when you're Illinois or Indiana, Michigan is a big game, no matter how good or bad Michigan is. So that's a big game. And then November 23rd, on the road at Ohio State. This game against Washington is probably the easiest game left on their schedule. They do play Purdue in the last week of the season, and Purdue's pretty bad too. But anyway, so over the next four games, it's Washington at Michigan State, home against Michigan, and at Ohio State. It would be real easy for Indiana to overlook this thing against Washington. I don't think they're going to do it. I think they're too well coached. I really like Signetti, that coach they brought in from the group of five. He's got Indiana playing at a high level. I get that the quarterback is out, Rourke, and he's been really good this year. I'm going to ride with Indiana anyway. Um, it, like I said, they've been covering every single week. They made me a lot of money. I'm going to go with them again. I think they beat Washington and cover the six and a half. They remain undefeated. So still just BYU with the only uh, undefeated team uh, taking a loss this week. Let's see uh, who's next on the list here. Now it was in the pit. Pitt plays Syracuse. Now this is a weeknight game. Is this a Friday night game? I believe this is a Friday night game. Uh, they play Pitt um, uh, or they play Syracuse. Pitt is six and zero. Oh. Let's see, Syracuse has, what, three losses? No, one? What? Holy shit. Syracuse is at 5-1, and 2-1 one, and one in the conference. Pitt, 6-0, and 2-0 oh, oh in the conference. Now, the game's at Pitt, and Pitt's very lucky this game is at Pitt. You see a lot of weird things happen on games during the week. I talk about this all the time. Pitt's favored by 5.5. I think Pitt gets the win. I'm going to take Syracuse in the 5.5 points, though. Um, Syracuse has not been tested at all up to this point of the season. In fact, if you look at Pitt's schedule, it's crazy how this works out. So here's the teams they've played so far. Kent State, Cincinnati, West Virginia, Youngstown State, North Carolina, and Cal. There's not a single team on there with a heartbeat or a pulse, never mind a winning record or ranked or anything. These are just one, two, that's just six horrific teams. Now, I don't say that to, to shit on Pitt at all. You only, you have to play the teams when you're scheduled to play them. You know, you don't make your conference schedule and all that kind of thing. So you, you, you play what's on your schedule. 
And P- and Pitts beat them all, 55 to 24, 28 to 27 against Cincinnati, 38 to 34 against West Virginia, 73-17 Youngstown State, 34-24 North Carolina, 17-15 Cowboys. What do you see here? A lot of close wins against not very good teams. Cal's so bad they lost to Florida State. And Florida State's a one-win team. That's the only win. Uh, Pitt beat Cal by two. North Carolina, terrible this year. Pitt beat them by 10. West Virginia, terrible. Pitt beat them by four. Uh, Cincinnati, as average as it gets, uh, they beat them by one. Now listen to the back half of the schedule. Syracuse this week at SMU, Virginia, Clemson, at Louisville, at Boston College. Every team on their remaining schedule is better than every team they've already played. So I say that to say this. Pitt's undefeated. They're 6-0. and They can deserve to be congratulated. They're halfway through the season, and they're undefeated, and that's an accomplishment. Um, they're losing three or four games. They're, it's, just the, the, it's just the scheduling dynamics here, the way this thing worked out. They played six absolute turds to start the season, and while I don't think every team remaining on their schedule is better than Pitt or will beat Pitt, all the teams remaining on their schedule are, are better than Cal. Who, you beat, who they beat by two. Better than North Carolina, who they beat by 10. So Syracuse, <coughs> Syracuse could beat them. I have sort of a rule that I live by, though. I, I absolutely hate taking road teams on weeknight games. Um, short rest, uh, weird t- travel schedules. Uh, I, so there, I, I can't pick Syracuse to win the game outright, although I will admit there is a chance. In fact, short of BYU losing, this may be number two on the list in terms of chances to uh, slip up this week for these undefeated teams. But I am going to take Pitt to get the win, but I'm going to take Syracuse and the points there. So I don't know if you consider that cheating. But uh, for ba- for gambling purposes, I'll take Syracuse and the points. But just picking a winner and a loser, um, give me Pitt. Uh, and uh, who's left on here? Let's see. Pitt was undefeated. Army. Uh, Army's off this week, so 0% chance Army loses. So there you go. That's all the undefeated teams. Navy was after that at 24, but we talked about them already with uh, playing Notre Dame. So there you go. That's all the undefeated teams. There's eight undefeated teams. Now, I've only picked one to lose outright, and that's BYU. But I'm going to admit it feels like two are losing of the eight. Um I, I definitely think Pitt could lose to Syracuse. Let's just run through them again real quick. Navy and Notre Dame. Notre Dame is probably winning that game. They're probably winning that game. Uh, Army is off. Pitt plays Syracuse. They could definitely lose. I have I picked Pitt, but this is a this is a fifty fifty game almost. I think uh, Indiana. They're playing Washington. Their quarterback is out. Hard for me to pick against Indiana right now. They've been on an absolute tear. BYU plays at Central Florida. I think BYU loses. Iowa State is off, so no chance uh, No chance that they lose. Miami plays Florida State, the worst team in the galaxy. No way they lose. Uh, Penn State plays at Wisconsin. There is a chance Penn State could lose. Like I said, they could get caught uh, potentially looking ahead to that Ohio State game. They play on the road at Wisconsin this week, then they go back home and host Ohio State next week. If they get caught looking past Wisconsin, Luke Fickle and company could beat them. So there's eight undefeated teams. I've picked one to lose. It feels like probably two, though. What do y'all think? Let me know in the comments down below. And have a good morning.